up, bro? Using that Toro. What's up, y'all? I'm Alan Hayne, the Lawn Care Nut. Thanks for coming back for yet another week. So here we are, middle of January. Um, crazy temperatures we've been having here. I've actually been in Mexico all week. I'll talk about that in a little bit, but got back, woke up this morning. I mean, temps were in like the high 40s, like really cold. Now it's like super warm and humid, like up into the high 70s and like I said a lot of humidity so a lot of things to talk about today a lot of tips in this video a lot of tips on board so you know no matter where you're at even if you're up north where things are still dormant I still think you'll get a few things out of this I'm gonna give you some updates show you some things that are going on here in the lawn I know a lot of you are gonna ask about results from my last app which was carbon X and then Melorganite right here um, we don't have any results yet again temps at night have been down in the 40s and so therefore the lawn is just barely growing I am gonna give it a charity mow today though just because I want to give it a mow and it's a good reason to get out some growth has occurred so I'm gonna go ahead and chop the tips off uh, but again, it's really just an excuse to get out and enjoy the mow here. So we'll do that. Um, and then also I'm gonna go ahead and take some soil readings. Listen guys, I talked about soil temperatures last year in my emails and everything else. By the way, the emails are just on hiatus right now for the winter. Those are gonna start up again probably next week. But either way, we talked a lot about soil temperatures last year and it was kind of part of our all continuing education here on how to do things at the right time and stuff like that. And we're gonna take that soil temperature idea up another notch this year. And I really want all of you to really start focusing on that because no matter where you live, north, south, east, or west, it's soil temps that dictate most of what we do in the lawn not just month with that like I said my St. Aug really isn't growing here and the reason is is because soil temps have fallen significantly below 65 degrees with any warm season turf zoysia St. Augustine Bermuda Bahia whatever you have there if soil temps get below 65 that really starts to slow the grass down they get below 55 and you are definitely stopped you start getting soil temps too much below that and you'll even start to go dormant so let's get to take a look here because I'm not dormant but I'm definitely not growing so let's kind of take a look at what I've got going on here today okay Google give me the weather here today in Bradenton Florida today in Bradenton Florida it'll be mostly sunny with a forecasted high of 76 and a low of 61 right now it's 75 and sunny so that's cool because I mean 61 tonight is a low means we're in a warming trend the last couple nights like I said it's been down into the 40s so we're actually gonna start on another growth trend here which is kind of nice and that's when I'll be able to give you guys the tips on uh, what the results were with the carbon X and the uh, Milo app here Okay, so this is my soil thermometer. I'll link the description below to it. It's cheap and it works fine. Um, there is one drawback though to these like this, and that is that you have to calibrate them first. So that's one of those things, but either way, we'll take a look at this. So there you go, soil temps are right at about 65 right now. And that's why you can see it's not really growing. Um, this is in the shade. Now let's go take a spot, you know, just like any, just like when you do soil tests that you're going to send off somewhere, you want to take samples from several spots. Well, you want to do the same thing when you're doing soil temp testing too. You don't want to just take it from one spot. So over here in the sun, and I'll show you something on the Greencast tool while I'm talking about this in Florida here, the soil temps, they swing wildly. Um, if you look at the Greencast tool, it's going to tell you that the soil temp for like the last 24 hours was like in the 40s. It's really weird, but that's just what happens here. I don't know if that happens in the north as much. Somebody can let me know. But soil tents definitely swing, you know, within 24 hours here. Yeah, so it looks like we're a few degrees warmer. Yeah, this is uh, pushing close to 70 degrees soil temp out here in the sun. But keep in mind, like I said, it swings wildly uh, between day and night. So that's kind of interesting. Uh, but our temps are going to level out here and start getting back a little bit more normal in the next week or so. But, you know, the last week, like I said, it's been down into the low 40s. Even people have been covering their plants around here a little bit, worried about it, so even though we're below the frost line. Let's measure next to a sidewalk here. See, here you go. We'll measure next to a sidewalk so we can show you how you get hot zones and stuff. But as you're looking here, you can probably see this is some Pro Vista here. See all these red tips? It's such a slow grower. It seems like it's affected more by cold temps with those red tips. Again, I've said this to you guys before. If you have St. Aug and you get red tips, it's nothing to be concerned about. It's just where the grass just stopped growing when it got too cool. And so instead of having chlorophyll in there, which is green, it's just this red color. So anyway, let's see if we got a hot zone here. And actually, nope. 
same as before pushing 70 so and I can feel the concrete it's cool so that's just interesting the concrete hasn't absorbed a lot of heat today uh, but either way soil temp there just under 70 you no know, 69 degrees hey so now you might want to record some of these in your lawn journal I mean that's up to you uh, but for me I'm just using it to understand that you know the lawn is not going to be growing quick anytime soon but I know that you know soil temps at 65 and it's just kind of sitting there some of the areas here in the Sun at the 70s it will grow but again at night you know these thing this at night the soil temp here will swing wildly so I don't know pretty interesting but interesting to watch all you know is things are not growing super fast yet okay so here we are on the uh, zoysia grow and you guys will remember I did a weed control app I can't remember how many days ago it, it is off the top of my head here I'll put it up on the screen but here is torpedo grass and just look at it I mean it's you tell me I would say that's some good results now I mean it, it's probably gonna need another app and I'm not mowing yet because the zoysia is just not growing but you can see I mean that's some well-worn damage um, and then you can see there's some here that didn't get damaged so it's definitely not a one-and-done application but Again, quinclorac showing results. Also, I looked at the label on Celsius, and I believe Celsius is labeled for torpedo grass, which I didn't know. I'll, I'll do some more research on that and let you guys know. But I did want to show you what happens when you get quinclorac on St. Augustine grass. And you can see my little overspray through here. Look at this right here. You know, my neighbor's super cool. He won't be upset, but look at that. Turns it red. If you guys use quinclorac up north and you use quinclorac on your... Um, crabgrass problem it also turns the crabgrass red so that's something to do with the mode of action there not to be confused with the red tips we talked about earlier that's from cold no quinclorac was sprayed way over there but it is interesting isn't it so this is why I told you not to spray in the wind and, and actually that's not too bad it's the one spot we're all clean down through there it's just right over here I got a little careless that's one way to make a domination line though isn't it here's uh Pro Vista in the backyard here and uh, it hasn't grown hardly at all since I mowed it however long ago that was but I'm gonna give it a charity mow today you guys remember I mowed this pretty low much lower than I'm used to I in fact I have haven't mowed a lawn ever I don't believe in my life that low so now I'm gonna show you guys some quick footage I took while I was in Mexico um, you know whenever I'm somewhere like that I try to be observant of the grass just to kind of see, I mean, what are they dealing with? What, what kind of things are happening there? And how can I equate that to my situation where I live? And that's part of what I talk about is just being observant. A lot of times you can just take the preponderance of an evidence. If you see something happening in one place, two places, three places, you can kind of think, hmm, what are the common things there? What are the common features? What do I notice about it that I'm also working with in my area or not working with at all? Like what, what is different about it? So either way, that's kind of where the thinking goes, but figured I would show you a few clips from there and then show you something that I noticed there that I also noticed here at my house. So I'm here at the uh, Paradisus um, Playa del Carmen and uh, they have St. Augustine grass around here. I'm not sure exactly what the variety of it is, but I want to show you a, a section here where you can see that St. Augustine can actually be a really good high traffic grass. Check this out. It's really early in the morning, nobody's really up yet, but you can see right here, see these are all chairs, right? And that's a bathroom right there. So what happens is these get pushed out during the day, so people have to walk across the grass right there to get to the bathroom. Check this out. You can see it, it's like trained laid down. I don't know if you can tell, but it's like all laid down from people walking on it. But it's still sufficiently thick. If you look at it, great color too, whatever they do to it. I'm not sure, but like I said, you can see it all just laying down that way. But it's still really thick. So that just shows not a bad high traffic grass if it needs to be. Here's another section here, right there. Don't want to get in trouble for filming outside the bathroom, but it's early. But look at that. You can just see that all laying down right there. See it? So that's pretty good for something that gets walked on every single day, all day. And just like everywhere else, they also have Bermuda invading. I'll give you a, see all this Bermuda right here? Look at that, all that's right there is Bermuda. And I've seen this in a couple spots around the resort. My assumption is, is that that, whatever that is, that drain, 
must have drowned out or killed the grass here at one point or created a low spot so the St. Augustine died and they couldn't get St. Augustine sod to replace so they had to use Bermuda seed. This is my guess because I've seen this in my own neighborhood and so that's what they have. And that again is my assumption because St. Augustine doesn't come in seed and if you can't get a little bit of sod, you throw down that seed. There's another section of Bermuda right up here and I'm gonna assume it's the same thing. They couldn't get sod. I mean, I don't know how many sod farms there are around here, but it can't be many. So if you look, the Bermuda's right there and right there. And it's almost, you know, it's invading, but it's, see it's, this is all Bermuda all through in here. But if you look, it's really concentrated right through there. So again, my assumption is at some point, something happened in here. There is a low spot right there, but something must have killed off the St. Aug and they just reseeded with the uh, Bermuda. Because you can almost see a pretty definite line right through there. Now I'm almost wondering if this isn't Bermuda, if this is something else. Uh, I don't know. Yeah, no, I think it is Bermuda. Y'all let me know if I'm wrong, but again, you can definitely see like a line right through there. All right, I'm going to try to keep this out of the wind. Hopefully the uh, audio will be okay. So see this here? You can see that's a Bermuda patch right there, and it's really well defined, especially like in here. You can see where the St. Aug is fairly well defined right there, and it goes around right here back up and around here and I've noticed this a lot in this neighborhood this is where the cable box is it's actually buried right there but in a lot of the areas here there was some sort of something added maybe when they did the fiber I don't know but around where all the cable access points are it's all Bermuda which tells me it's a similar thing somebody just threw seed down and walked away and that seed was Bermuda because there is no St. Augustine seed just being observant again it's not just my house a lot of them have the same issue. This is also showing me I need to up my watering over here. This is the sunniest spot here in the lawn. And uh, we're at no rain now. We're only on my irrigation. So I'm going to have to up the watering on this side, I think. Always being observant, my friends. Here, look. Now you can really see the Bermuda in there. See it? Because it's starting to go a little dormant. Right in there. All around the cable box. Here's another way you can tell that I need to water or that this is uh, lacking water over here. See my footprints? Just like with uh, northern grass, when, you're, when your footprints are there and they stay, I mean, for a significant amount of time, like more than a minute or so, without popping back up, that tells you that the grass needs more water. And you can see my footprints in there, right? Right there, right there. My strides are not too long, because I'm a short guy. <laughs> As you guys like to point out. But anyway, just gotta up my watering in here. All right, well, hey, I wanted to uh, just show you this. I decided to uh, push the palmetto really low. I mean, why not, right? We're in cooler temps, it's growing slow anyway, it's not gonna hurt it. And I just wanna see what happens. There's some guys in the Facebook group that mow their St. Aug pretty low, and it looks good. So we'll test what the you know height is, the height of cut. We'll test it on the mower here in a second, but I wanna show you what this looks like. The other thing to keep in mind with St. Augustine grass is you have so much stolen growth underneath here that you know the mower is not really riding on the soil when you mow. It's actually riding up on top of the stolen base. Now there's not a lot of stolens thick here, but in that Floratam across over there, which is also about 30% Bermuda grass now, all that over there, there's so much stolenization going on over there. That, I mean, that mower's riding up on like a like a mattress of stolens and rhizomes fighting with each other. So, whole different story over there. Cannot go low over there. But anyway, here, let's just show you. So this was mowed last at, at four and a quarter, according to the Time Master. And now it's being mowed at, I'm gonna guess like three and a half, but we'll go measure it in a second. But remember, it floats on the stolens, but we'll still measure what the actual blade height is. There's 
uncut, and there's cut. So, see if I can keep it low for a while, see what it does. I like the low look of it. I'll show it to you uh, when it's done too. But real quick, let's go just test and see what this is actually mowing at, just as far as blade height from the ground. Just under three and a half. Right there, so three and three eighths. Um, so just under three and a half. That's what we're mowing at. But again, remember, it rides up on top of the stolen, so it's not the same. By the way, I hope the audio will be okay on this. Here is um, Pro Vista here, and this is Empire Zoysia here. That right there is Nuts Edge. Um, but I had sprayed the Quinclorac and Sedge Hammer mixture over here as well, and you can see some of the you can see some of the uh, damage occurring here on the torpedo grass. This is definitely going to need another app. Wow, this is always just really pretty though, look at that. Beautiful. But anyway, so this is an area where the two abut, and we're not comparing them here because they're not really grass types that I'm gonna compare that way, but you can see overspray from my Quinclorac that did get onto the Provista, and this answers a question. A lot of people think, well, Provista's bulletproof because it can handle glyphosate, and the answer is no. This is susceptible to all of the same things that Floritam is, including, including Quinclorac. You cannot use Quinclorac on any St. Augustine grass at all. And you can see, I got some here because I sprayed up to that and some overspray, and you can see the Provista's damage. See the red there? That's from Quinclorac right there. So that answers a question. Yes, this stuff is tolerant, resistant, whatever term you want to use. It ain't going to be hurt by no glyphosate. But other weed controls that are not labeled for St. Augustine grass cannot be used on Provista. So I just wanted to kind of point that out to you. You can even see up in there a little bit. Again, that's why I tell you guys not to spray in the wind. I did it because I'm a bad person, but it looks like a little bit got up in there too. 